So welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome to the expert interview series on the type 2 diabetes remission blueprint. This series is really tailored to bring in experts in the field of health and wellness to hear about their stories and also hear what they see in their practice when it comes to diabetes prevention and remission. So I do have the honor of introducing today's expert, Pamela Worth. Welcome to the series. It's such a great time to um, have you on. Thank you, Dr. Nana. It's great to be here. Awesome. Awesome. So to let you know a little bit about Pamela, Pamela is a hockey mom, a lifelong learner, and a former public company executive, management consultant, author, and health enthusiast. She founded a company called Hello Health following a neurodiversity diagnosis of her son, and is dedicated to nutrition, education, and building a network to help heal people from the inside out, particularly in those areas of neurodiversity, autoimmune, and autism syndrome. So she's definitely someone who really gets to the root cause, right? So she accompanied these patients along with her experience while living in Asia and Europe with U.S. doctors and other families to write Hello Health and soon to be published Saving My Son. Pamela's consulting life experiences and attention to detail allowed her to work with a number of people and companies with a passion for helping others. So welcome again, Pamela. I love your stories. Before we even get into it, I want you to share a little bit about that because I really want the audience to get to know about your background, your experiences, and how that influenced you to doing what you're doing now. Yeah, no, for sure. You know, I'd like to start by saying I've got two healthy teenage boys now. Um, oh, one of lovely. them at the age of five and a half was uh, diagnosed with Tourette's, anxiety, depression, OCD, and autism. And they said, he's regressing so quickly, you're going to need to take care of him the rest of his life. And I thought, well, gosh, that sounds awfully uh, permanent and daunting, you know, at such a young age. So I went to so many different doctors, primary care, allergists, um, other primary care, you know, what do you do when you've got a five and a half year old? And so I ended up um, thinking, okay, well, it seems like a lot of this is maybe in his head. So I started looking for neurologists. And so I found mm -hmm. a neurologist, um, MD, originally from the from Asia, educated at UCLA. And the first thing the doctor said was, let's pull some blood work and find out what's going on inside. And I thought, well, shoot, that that's really smart. Cause I don't know why we don't do that more often. No um, one does that. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it's adults or kids. I mean, I just don't know that we kind of take a look at why first. So that actually resonated with me. And um, the blood work showed that he was low in vitamin D3, B12, genetic marker MTHFR, which about half the population has which means you can't absorb your vitamins and minerals correctly. If you have a lot of folic acid in your diet, uh, you need methylfolate, um, which is very cost effective and easy to replace. Uh, he also had CMV, which is a really common virus. And then he had high strep titers, suggesting an active strep infection, even though he was negative for strep throat. So that can be a thing. And the doctor said, look, there's so much going on in his little body right now that his immune system is not working properly. We have to fix his gut. We have to remove gluten and sugar. I'm going to teach you how to make supplements at home that will help his gut because the gut helps the brain. And I thought, okay, that sounds really strange, but okay. Um, and she said, give me about a year and he's going to be fine. And I said, okay, sure. So sure enough, about a year passed, he popped back, mm -hmm. hasn't left us since. So some of the things that she taught me is that, um, thankfully there's more and more research about this now. Uh, most of our neurotransmitters in our immune system is actually housed in our gut. And when we eat foods that are too high in things that metabolize down into sugar, that really sets the gut into a, an unbalanced place. And then mm -hmm. the unbalancedness, for lack of a better word, goes up to your brain and affects things like your mood, your sleep, yeah. your ability to fight infection. Um, mm -hmm. And so super interesting. And, and it was really um, eye opening to me. So she said, look, there's about 15 probiotics he but really all of us need on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, they do different things in the body and um, two organic prebiotics, vitamin D3, vitamin B12, methylfolate, that is going to help put the good stuff into the gut. Now it's really Really important because a lot of these kids and people, especially those with MTHFR, don't know how, well, it's not that they don't know how, their bodies can't detox properly. And so when your body is over toxified, it's over inflamed, and then it struggles to absorb those vitamins and minerals and to act in an optimal way, right? I said, okay, so now what? And she said, well, you uh -huh. need things like turmeric, oswellia, um, olive leaf extract, oregano, cinnamon, parsley, things that really help calm the body and pull those toxins out. Um, yeah. and 
and obviously there's a lot more um, plants and things that that do that as well. So those were kind of the initial ones that we started with. You know, what, one of the things that you brought, like you said in the very beginning, was how you actually went to different doctors. You did not just accept the diagnosis. And I think often a lot of people just accept certain things. And it's like, you know, when you're doing something in your house, you would definitely get different code, right? So I always encourage people that they should be an advocate for their health. And I love how you stood up for your son, which of course is, is a natural thing as a mom, right? Yeah. So I love that you were able to do that. And that's that's just amazing. The hard part in this is it costs money to do these things, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, at one point, I had to sell my car to pay for a lot of what I was doing because I kept getting yeah. pushed in these different roads um, of like, hey, you got to go talk to this person. You got to go talk to this person. They're cash pay only. And there are yeah. some awesome cash pay onlys. Um, and it could be that insurance makes it so difficult that, you know, yeah. there might be more and more of that in the future. Mm -hmm. But it's really, really hard when everybody has an exorbitant uh, initial first time fee to try and see someone and mm -hmm. it's not always yeah. realistic and so um I you know using your your network asking around I mean mm -hmm. it, it's kind of embarrassing but you know I just kind of learned over the years that everybody has something going on and so if you oh, are, yeah. allow yourself to be open and say hey I'm really struggling in this way mm -hmm. nine times out of ten people are nice about it and they say hey mm -hmm. you know go talk to so and so and so and so yeah. may or may not be able to help you but they might be able to introduce you to somebody and it kind of leads you down exactly. this really interesting path where I think we can actually all help each other so mm -hmm. that's really why I kind of got into this so a I really felt strongly that this happened to me for a reason or us for a reason and so I ended up writing a book along with other doctors and families, um, sharing our story as well as mm -hmm. research and other experience sharing, mm -hmm. particularly from the eyes of, of doctors that really try to get to the root cause of what's going on. Which, cause, is yeah. And that didn't really feel like enough. So then I started the supplement company and now I'm layering in cost-effective lab testing and telehealth because part of our journey was it was so hard to find cost-effective lab testing and cost-effective mm -hmm. health care mm -hmm. practitioners that are willing to help us, yeah. um, whether it's in person or it's you know remote. And thankfully mm -hmm. the technology is there now as well as a lot of the state laws that are allowing this. Um, exactly. Which is fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So before we even go any further, let's go back because it's a, it's a lot of information for, you know, the audience who really don't know what inflammation is, what has gut health got to do with all that stuff. So let's trickle back down to when you had mentioned, because you mentioned that inflammation in gut health mm -hmm. was associated to your son's um, journey, right? So could you share with the audience what even inflammation is, right? Because obviously when people think of it, they think of the pain, the swelling, the redness. But is that what you're talking about? You're you talking about maybe chronic inflammation and how that in gut yeah. is associated to metabolism, you know, even cognitive uh, illnesses as well. Can you share a little bit about that as well? Yeah. And that was definitely part of my journey too, was understanding what is inflammation, what causes <laughs> yeah. it. Um, when your body's inflamed, whether it's acute, like you just broke your arm, or it's mm -hmm. uh, more chronic or subdued, kind of like a, you know, and there's more and more research coming out about how all disease is from chronic inflammation. And so mm -hmm. anything that upsets your body basically puts it out of balance and causes it to be on edge or inflamed, if you will. And so I started kind of looking into what potentially can cause inflammation. Well, mm -hmm. you can't get rid of it all. I mean, it's just, it's it, it, it's impossible. Absolutely. Um, yeah. You know, some easy ways are starting with, with sugar. Sugar makes your body inflamed. Um, too many simple carbohydrates hydrates um, makes your body inflamed. So reducing the amount of, you know, breads and gluten mm -hmm. things and um, certain cleaning supplies can really upset mm -hmm. your body and make mm -hmm. it uh, a yeah. lot of carpet. Carpet puts off chemicals for, gosh, I think it's almost 30 years. So we pulled the carpet out of the house because that's a, frankly mm -hmm. an easy one that um, it's always molding in the homes and stuff can contribute to that as well. Yeah. Mold, um, taking a look at your water, even if you use a, a filter, it's still, you know, it still contains some things, but it's worth filtering mm -hmm. to try and remove mm -hmm. some of the other things. Mm -hmm. um, just really taking a look at everything and saying, what can we do about what is or isn't as yeah. clean as it can be? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's some of it you can do, some of it you're like, you know, that's just part of where we live. And um, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, you can't really help what we are exposed to, right? When we get yeah. out of the house, we are exposed to so many things. But, you know, I always say that just do what you can do that is in your control, right? As in the food that we eat, like you were mentioning, the, the carpet, even if you have to take your carpet out, just do that, right? And, and just 
you know, just do the little things that you have control over. So these are really important. And I love how you had explained the inflammation. So acute inflammation, obviously, is, is good. We all need that. But when it becomes chronic, right, that's when it becomes a bit questionable. That's when we have to raise the eyebrow. And obviously, gut health is also associated to um, the, the, there's a gut brain axis as well. And I think you had mentioned that as well. If you want to just elaborate on that, you can do that. Yeah, there's some, I mean, thankfully that there's a lot more research and a lot more studies. And so I encourage people to kind of fact check all this, but kind of interesting. Like I always thought, you know, anything going on in my brain is in my brain, but it's really there. It's, it's one system. It's connected. Yeah. And even the, the gut is often called the, the second brain, right? Cause it houses a lot of stuff and it's involved with other chronic illnesses and even cognitive functions and stuff. So it's really important. At least I, I think almost all illnesses can be traced to the gut, especially mm -hmm. if you have like some kind of mental problem or condition, it definitely can be traced to the gut. So it's something that we have to look into because we have the vagus nerve that connect the gut to your brain, right? And it's, it's, it's just connected. So whatever that is going on here can potentially affect your, your brain as well. Yeah. Yeah. So what are some of the signs or symptoms that someone can experience when they have like chronic inflammation or gut? Like, can you speak on that? So at least people will know to, to know what to do if they're experiencing that. Yeah. I mean, again, that the research is continuing to come out and it's super interesting. Definitely uh, just know that you're not alone and, and, and continue trusting yourself as you. Um, they're mm -hmm. now saying that anxiety and depression is, is, you know, largely attributed to an imbalanced gut. Um, you know, you might have MTHFR if you have a family history of allergies, um, uh -huh. uh, arthritis, um, autoimmune disorders, uh -huh. um, heart problems, eczema, you know. So the interesting thing about autoimmune is it's basically a description of your body being inflamed and having symptoms on a certain organ, for lack of a better way of saying it, right? And so there's over 85 autoimmune disorders now, right? And uh, you can take a look at it. And when you really boil it down, it's inflammation affecting a certain area of the body. So, you know, and it sounds kind of crass, but if you can really take a look at the entire body and just understand, it might not be that I only have a problem with that part of my body. It's just that my body's expressed pressing it there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, if I mm -hmm. can take a look at my entire body and mm -hmm. think about how I can clean things up and help it detox more, mm -hmm. I might just be able to get my hands around this and actually reverse it. Yeah, it definitely does not affect a lot of different parts of the body, the brain, your cells, your, your heart, your organs, your digestion. So it's not only focused on one part of the body, it, can, it can spread our skin. Yeah. So it's like you're always tired. You have an eczema, like you mentioned, you know, people are having bloating, digest, digestion problems, a whole lot of food intolerance, illness, sleep issues. You know, mm -hmm. you go to bed and you can't even sleep. All these can be traced to gut problems, chronic inflammation as well. Yeah. So it sure. all is all connected and it's trickled down. <laughs> so you, you had mentioned a bit in the beginning about how to heal your gut, right? So can you share a little bit more? Because I didn't want to, you know, put all that good stuff in the front. I wanted to share, I wanted you to share your story a bit. So can you uh, let the audience in on how or some of the possible practical ways that someone can heal the gut and also the importance of personalized care and nutrition and testing and things like that? Yes, it's definitely important to test your body, test mm -hmm. your family's bodies, understand what's happening, what they're low in. And it's not just a one and done, you know, it's, it's okay. And it's a good idea to test periodically and make sure that things are progressing mm -hmm. the way that, that you had planned on and hoped for. Mm -hmm. um, definitely find a practitioner that you trust, somebody that you can talk to that actually listens to you and doesn't make you feel crazy. That's open to the fact that we may or may not know everything, uh, mm -hmm. that maybe it's okay to do additional research. Um, I like PubMed. I like NIH. Um, and so understanding some of the things that have been in clinical trials for maybe five or 10 years that technically are not in practice, but mm -hmm. are close to being in practice, or they've been in practice in other regions of the world for years, you know, mm -hmm. maybe they have been um, in Asia, Australia, Europe, um, mm -hmm. places where uh, you can really, I mean, they have some very, very robust um, publications and clinical trials yeah. in, in studies and research. Um, and so, and it's, it's funny to me because when I, um, I was fortunate enough in college to do a study abroad in London. And so I got to know a lot of people from, from Europe mm -hmm. and, yeah, okay. um, in particular, I was very close friends with some people from Italy. And so when I was going through this with my son, uh, randomly 
um, met this person, um, very much into essential oils to help the body detox and reduce inflammation. I didn't really know much about it. And so uh -huh. he's talking about the impact of oregano on bacteria, olive leaf extract on viruses, turmeric and boswellia for antibacterial, antiviral, um, uh -huh anti-inflammatory. Um, and so I was like, I don't know, it sounds kind of crazy. So then I got in touch with them and they were like, well, yeah, everybody knows that. And I was like, no, not everybody knows that. So my point being that in other parts of the world, they're very- It's accustomed. normal, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like a regular conversation amongst them. Yeah. yeah. They're very comfortable starting with things like nutrition and plants. Mm -hmm. So when I, when I say fixing the gut, what the doctor taught me was let's start with the really easy stuff. And that's getting rid of sugar and gluten. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, harder one is casein, which is really dairy. We only mm -hmm. got rid of dairy for about six months and then we brought it back. Um, but it was enough to kind of, we were trying to reduce the inflammation really fast, as fast as mm -hmm. we could. Um, mm -hmm. and that meant um, restricting certain foods that could be inflammatory in nature. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, really, really focusing on on different plants that would help the gut get back into balance, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as well as um, a group of probiotics that would help the gut get mm -hmm. back into balance. Um, yeah. When I talk to a lot of people, they say it's really, really hard for them and their families. And I totally appreciate that. And what I would recommend is getting a good blender and blending the crap out of stuff and just drinking it. Um, mm -hmm. Worse comes to worse, you know, there's a way to get a lot of that stuff down. Um, even if it's not ideal and it's not, you know, on their dinner plate or whatever, it's, um, mm -hmm. it's necessary to get certain nutrients and, and a, a wide range of of things. Yeah. Um, and you know, when, when you think about that, I know some people are a bit hesitant when they have to make a change, but you have to understand that it took some years for you to develop that yeah. illness, right? So when you starting to go back to the basics, it's not going to be like a quick thing. It's not going to be a quick fix, right? So it will take some time. So don't be too hard on yourself. Just start gradually, like uh, what Pam, uh, Pamela is saying, and just start taking a step. Always out, just say, take, say yes to your health right and just gradually taking baby steps each and every day and it's very important to also note that it, it, there's individual like likes needs right it's personalized it, it does not a one size fit all you know so what she's sharing might have worked for her son and obviously will work for other people but it's important for you to first do a test right to know exactly what's going on in in your body because everyone has a different you know we all have we are all different so obviously we will experience different things so it's very important for us to um, have that individualized uh, approach to health when it comes to health as well. So I like that you mentioned you mentioned that as well. And obviously the lifestyle modification, can you talk on that as well? Yeah, diet is super important. Exercise is really important. Eat, sunlight is really important, even if uh -huh. it means, you know, um, just going outside and taking a walk. Um, uh -huh. if it's too hot, you know, can can you get onto a treadmill or walk uh -huh. around? Um, it's just um, some, some, some activity is really important. Yeah. Um, Getting off of screens is really, really important. Um, yeah, just, uh, it's it's really hard on the brain. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and and I know that you you spend a lot of time on diabetes. My husband, um, who's thin, was mm -hmm. um, was diagnosed, right? Diagnosed, yeah. And he was super frustrated. <laughs> and what it came down to was he was not exercising mm -hmm. and he was vegan. And mm -hmm. nothing against vegans, he was a lazy vegan. So he was eating too many carbs and not exercising enough. And it, it resulted in his body presenting like diabetes. And since he um, reduced and removed a lot of those um, carbohydrates, he's, he's fine. Blood he's down. fine. Awesome. And I love that you brought it up because a lot of people think that if you're overweight or have some weight to you, that's eventually going to lead to type two. But there are people that are, you know, as petite or smaller in weight, and they still can develop that. So it's not, it's a risk factor to it, but it's not necessarily a root cause. And it's really important to go to the underlying problem. Yeah. Is it nutrient deficiency? Is it poor exercise? Is it, you know, it can be so many. Is it gut health? Is it chronic inflammation for that particular mm -hmm. person? So it's very important. And I like that you brought it up. It's very important to go to the root because that's what we talk about on this channel and even the people I work with. Getting to the root cause is the key. If you want to reverse diabetes, if you want to put it in remission, you definitely have to get to the root. And one of it is to obviously do a test to figure out what is actually 
causing the problem that you are exhibiting, right? So um, we're going to wrap up very soon, but I know that it's been a long journey for you as, as a mom, as a parent. So could you share a little bit about maybe an advice that you have for someone who's going through a similar situation with, you know, a child or maybe a caregiver even, right? Especially in seeking holistic or maybe functional medicine approaches to health and not just... um taking medications for the rest of their life. What advice do you have for such person? Yeah, trust yourself and continue the fight um, until mm-hmm. you have exhausted as many options as you can. I mean, mm-hmm. I had um, sister-in-law call the police on how I was, you know, handling the situation. Oh, wow. One of the pediatricians would continually call and tell me that I was doing the wrong thing. They had called the local children's hospital and told them not to see him because I was, you know, not going to listen to them and take the instruction. He, uh, years later, called and apologize. Um, mm-hmm. But you've you've got to, you've just got to push and trust yourself and ask for help. You can't do it alone. Um, mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, just know mm-hmm. that you- were you were you in different groups as well to help support you? How important is it to get community help and support? Yeah, and I did it a lot through private Facebook groups, which in, in retrospect, is frankly, kind of dangerous in terms of how they use information. And so part of what I'm building is um, a your community. company. Yeah. So part of part of what will be happening in 2024 and 2025, five is building out more of a community um, for people to connect with each other in a safe way. Um, so it's, it's, um, it's, it's better because you, you know, it, it takes a village. It really, mm-hmm. it's really hard and scary. Yeah. So could you share a little bit about your company? Hello, hello, hello. I see it in the background over there. Just share a little bit about it and what you do and how you can support people as well. Yeah, of course. So um, I started with the book is, is, is one place to start called Saving My Son. It's mm-hmm. uh, meant to be an easy read, um, provide people some thoughts and ideas in terms of of, of how to take a look at things. Um, mm-hmm. I have a podcast called Encourage Your Wellness where I bring doc- different doctors on and mm-hmm. they um, are practitioners with a different um, take in terms of how to get to the the holistic um, in, in their particular experience on how to help people get to the root of what's going on with them. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got the supplements that that are live, uh, which help people from brain, gut, and immune health. Um, mm-hmm. uh, in fact, a lot of um, people that are pre-diabetic or diabetic take the organic CMOS that's been providing mm-hmm. a lot of support as well as it's a natural collagen producer. Mm-hmm. Um, Ellie Gray has two organic prebiotics, 15 probiotics, plus methylfolate, mm-hmm. plus vitamin D3. Uh, that's super for, for people for optimal gut-brain connection. Um, and then uh, layering in um, lab testing and telehealth as well. So community and mix of mm-hmm. products and services to, to help. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really awesome. That's a really good work that you're contributing to the community. And you know, it, I always like to say that a lot of people hear supplement and they think it's a magic pill, right? But if you don't do the work, if you don't fix your lifestyle, your nutrition and all that stuff, it's still not going to do the work that it's supposed to do for you. So yeah. it's really important for you to get to the root and fix out, go back to the basics, right? Yeah, and do all sure. the things that you have to do before you even start supplementing stuff. So I would love for you to share your contact information with the audience if someone wants to reach out to you. And just for even support, right? Because I know a lot of people are going through these chronic illnesses and are frustrated, overwhelmed, and not sure what to do. So you can share your information. And also if you want to do one last advice to everyone on here on what they can do to support their health, that would be lovely as well. My email is Pam. Pamela, P-A-M-E-L-A at hello.health. Mm-hmm. Uh, the company website is gethellohealth.com or www.hello.health. Mm-hmm. And we're on Amazon, walmart.com, Kroger.com. Um, the website, obviously, uh, we're taking a look at some different retail shelves that we're going to be pushing into and unravel mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. number of things. Yeah. So thank you so much. This is really insightful. And I know that it helped many people to get to the root cause, try to figure out what tests that they can do to actually get the, the uh, to have an idea of what's going on in their bodies as well so it's very enlightening for you to shed some light on this as well so thank you for your time and i appreciate your time being here my pleasure